Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to play Next War Vietnam. Uh, scenario number two, third Indochina War. This is a scenario where Chinese units are trying to do better than they did at 1979 when they attacked uh, uh, Vietnam from the north, heading directly to Hanoi. They kind of failed. Uh, at 90, uh, at uh, 1979, Chinese units uh, only managed to uh, make their way nearby the border, capturing Lang Song city, but all in all, they weren't able, or they decided not to, reaching the Hanoi. In this scenario, uh, situation is different. Uh, China, uh, China pl uh, Chinese player needs to capture Hanoi because uh, in this scenario, uh, Hanoi is a victory, uh, is a vict victory place. A player that control more hexes of the Hanoi at the end of the turn four wins <coughs> this scenario. I think I need to say that English is not my first language, so sorry if uh, this video will not be perfect in terms of uh, language. I will do my best, I promise, but I hope it will be helpful. Uh, my idea is to make it de uh, very de detailed. So, if uh, Next War Vietnam is uh, by chance your first uh, contact with Next War series, then I hope I will be able to show you how this system works on the standard rules. This is very important to mention because uh, this system has two sets of rules. Standard series rules and advanced series rules. Uh, standard series rules are fairly easy and I guess they, there shouldn't be much problems for anyone to understand. <clears throat> well, uh, advanced series rules are not that easy but they are uh, made only for the huge campaign scenarios. For such smaller scenarios like this, we are using standard rules only. Every time I record a game with, that covers a lot of plays, I have all, always a problem with logistic. How to <clears throat> make, uh, make it work, how to show you everything, because uh, even this scenario, which is smaller and limited, <clears throat> uses some space. First, it uses a lot of uh, a part of operational map with 27 row as a border and it uses on also some part of the strategic display. Let's move a bit. Here we have a strategic display. It is quite big as well, but uh, for the purpose of this scenario uh, we are using only a limited space, uh, a space of the strategic display with Gulf of Tonkin, South China Sea and Spartly Islands. All the other zones are not important for us. So, uh, that's uh, when it comes to the introduction. Uh, we can start with our game. So, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, move step by step. Uh, game uh, comes with the, such a standard sequence of uh, play, which is quite handy here. So, the first phase we have is weather phase. Uh, in the turn one, we don't have to roll for weather. It is always fine, clear, because we, uh, we can guess that attacker uh, uh, wants to attack when the weather is fine and it works for him. Next is Supli phase. Uh, it is optional uh, rule, you don't have to use it, but I recommend to use it. But uh, it's not uh, going to work for us in the turn one, because in the turn one all the units are in Supli. So, next we have Initiative Air Naval Phase. First says, determine if either player has the initiative for the game turn. So, uh, according to the sp uh, scenario special rules, a uh, Chinese player has an initiative in the turns 1, 2 and 3. So, uh, there is uh, initiative for Chinese player without any uh, counting and stuff like that. Next we have each player uh, rolls for the standard game air points chart. Okay, so that's where the fun starts. 
<clears throat> we are going to use standard game air points table. We are in the turn one and we have to make a roll. First for China. China uses these red numbers. It is four, so China has seven air points. So let's go to the matrix table and place air points counter on seven. Now <clears throat> for Vietnam. It is also four, so Vietnam has two air points. Not much. And now we have to check air superiority. We are moving here into air superiority table, track, sorry, and you can see that the difference of 0 and 3 is contested. The difference between 4 and 7 is advantage. 8 and 15 is superiority and 16 or more it is supremacy. And now, uh, Chinese player has 7 points, Vietnamese player has uh, 2 points, so the difference is 5. But it is not true. For this uh, uh, particular game this, the, there comes special rules says that during uh, this step Chinese player has to add 8 to his air points. So we have 5, 7 plus 8 is 15, 15 minus 2 is 13. So 13 is between 8 and 15, so it is Chinese air superiority. It doesn't mean that a Chinese player gets additional 8 points. No, he doesn't. It's something like uh, that it shows uh, overall Chinese superiority when it comes to the infrastructure, uh, a, lot, a bit more modern equipment, uh, better quality of their airplanes and so. Uh, Chinese players still have 7 air points, but he gets uh, more points uh, only for super air superiority. So this is quite good. You will see it works great uh, uh, in the combat and some other stuff. So let's move forward and next we have set up air superiority. We already did. And next, during non-storm turns, roll for sea control. First for inshore boxes, then for at sea boxes. And now we are going. We are moving to the step that a lot of people find quite tricky. So, let's move to the strategic display. Strategic, di strategic display is divided into two kind of uh, zones. We have sea zones, these are these uh, big uh, areas uh, with white borders, and we have uh, inshore boxes. For example, Tonkin inshore box, Parcels inshore box, uh, Spartley's inshore box and so on. Uh, in this uh, phase we have first to roll for control of inshore boxes and then for at sea boxes. According to the uh, game rules these three sea area areas are initially, initially controlled by China. And now let's take a rule book to the chapter 7 and uh, paragraph 72 and it says if at sea box is contested not controlled by either player do not roll for inshore box if a, if a player controls at sea box and also controls inshore box do not roll for inshore box if player controls at sea box and the inshore box is contested roll for inshore box <clears throat> and that's what we're going to do. A player uh, controls, Chinese player controls these three zones but none of these inshore boxes. So we have to make rolls for inshore boxes to check if Chinese player will be able to control it. Maybe it will be controlled by Vietnamese player but maybe it will be contested. So we have to use <coughs> C control table which is here and add proper modifiers for rolls. If we get two or less, a Chinese player controls this zone. If we roll three or five, it is contested, and if six or more allied, this means Vietnamese player here controls such a zone. We are starting with Gulf of Tonkin inshore box. So, 
Game specific rules say that there is minus two modifier for Gulf of Tonkin, so we get minus two. Next, for non allied suck CV present, we have no C units in this inshore box. Next, subtreat level. Subtreat level is here. You can see that subtreat level for the China is minus two, so we get minus two and then anti-submarine warfare level plus anti-submarine warfare level is one so we get plus one so now we have minus three modifier next only in East China Sea, Taiwan Straits, South China Sea, Spartlis, Gulf of Tonkin and allied only in the Sea of Japan plus one minus one if non-allied or allied air superiority or plus two if supremacy. We have non-allied superiority so we get minus one. So uh, all the other modif uh, these modifiers are for advanced game so we can ignore them and in short box only. Non-allied allied control of island land area. This is important for the uh, uh, island lands so this is not important for us here for the, for the Gulf of Tonkin inshore box. So we have minus four modifier and now I have to make a roll. I rolled two. Two minus four is minus two. So because of that Gulf of Tonkin is controlled by the Chinese player. And I have to place Chinese player control uh, uh, counter. Next we are moving to parcels. Uh, what modifiers we have here? No minus two for Gulf of Tonkin because it works for Gulf of Tonkin only, and we have minus uh, one, sorry, minus two because of anti uh, because of the sub threat. We have plus one because of uh, anti submarine warfare, so we have minus one, and we have minus one because of uh, uh, enemy, uh, sorry, because of Chinese AU superiority. So it's minus two. So let's make a roll. It is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. And because of that, Parcels in Shore Box is controlled by Allied Player. And finally, sorry, Spartlis. Same situation, minus 2 modifier, 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. So it is contested. We don't have to, we, we don't place any counter here, it is contested. And now we have to make a rolls for at sea zones. But if uh, any player controls uh, inshore box and sea at sea zone, you don't have to make a rolls. This this uh, this area is fully controlled by the Chinese navy. Next, South China Sea uh, inshore box is controlled by allied allied player. So we have to make a roll for at sea zone. We have minus two modifier, minus one for uh, AO superiority, and minus two for sub threat, and plus one for anti submarine warfare. So we're gonna have to make roll with minus two. I rolled seven. Seven minus two is five, so it is contested. And finally, for Spartlis, same situation, minus two. zero. So Spartlis is, um, uh, has minus two, so it is controlled by Chinese player. All right, this covers uh, C uh, control stuff. And next we have mine clearance. This is not important for this game and for, sorry for this scenario now, we don't have any mines <coughs> around. So we are moving into initiative movement and combat phase. Uh, this is important thing because when uh, any player has an initiative we have to play initiative movement and combat phase if uh, none of players have an initiative we are going we are skipping all this stuff with initiative movement combat phase and we are moving straight into basic movement and combat phase but since Chinese player has an initiative we're going to play this phase 
This is great bonus for the attacking player because it gives them two additional movement uh, segments and two additional combat segments. So this is going to be a very good thing when you are going to make any attacks. So let's stay here for a while and make some C movement because C movement is something that a lot of people uh, find problematic as well. It is not because uh, this is something hard, I believe, but uh, it is mostly because it is not very well uh, described on the rulebook. And I think it lacks of proper examples in the rulebook. This is a problem, I think. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to move this sack first. It moves in the Gulf of Tonkin. Gulf of Tonkin is uh, controlled by a Chinese player, so it can move there freely. And, uh, golden rule says, uh, now naval unit may move into one at sea zone during movement segment. So, I moved here, in the Gulf of Tonkin, and because of that, I cannot move uh, any further in the South China Sea, Spartly and so. I, move, I can move on to the one at sea zone only. But, uh, it doesn't mean I cannot move any further. I can move further as long as I don't enter any more at sea zone. So, I can enter Gulf of Tonkin, sorry, uh, inshore box, because it is not sea zone. And I can stay here if I want to. It is not a problem for me. I can move even further into, uh, uh, into uh, board, and I will do so, or not. The question is if I want to, because if I will stay here, this ship, this uh, group, will give me a bonus for the next uh, sea control rolls. So sometimes it is good to just let your ships stay there, at sea, or in the inshore box, and provide some mod modifiers for sea rolls. But if they, if they will stay here, they won't be able to give us some nice support for the uh, combat. So this quest the question is if we want to move them or not. I think I will let them stay. Next, I'm going to move this carrier group and it will stay in the Gulf of Tonkin. I'm not going to move them any further. They will stay here and they will uh, help me to control Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, because uh, this is the only sea zone that uh, uh, plays some role in this uh, scenario. We can simply ignore South China Sea and Sparty Islands because uh, in, this, in this small scenario they don't play any important role. They play a very important role when you play full campaign and you want to co control these areas because it, it limits naval movement of the enemy uh, ships and it makes uh, enemy harder to move their units into the Vietnam. But in this scenario, uh, the only season we really care of is Gulf of Tonkin. Okay, next. Next we have two <coughs> amphibia units. <coughs> These amphibious units are important because they allow us to transport our marines into the enemy area and then they were, where they are able to make some landfall. Okay, so you can see these two here, I guess you can. This is a cargo limit. This means that such a unit may transport uh, units of the stacking value of two. So I can uh, load these two uh, uh, amphibio, uh, uh, amphibios uh, capable brigades into my amphibia unit and move them. They are moving here into the Gulf of Tonkin, then into this uh, Thai, uh, Gulf of Tonkin inshore box and finally on the map. And that's where we are going to. So, welcome to the operational map. Like I said before, uh, see uh, naval unit may move as long as it not uh, as it's not entering more than one sea zone. So, it moves uh, moved through the Gulf of Tonkin, then into the Gulf of Tonkin inshore box and finally at the all sea hex in the Gulf of Tonkin at the operational map. And now let's take a look on the at sea hexes, all sea hexes. Uh, in short, uh, naval units may move only 
on the, on the, uh, uh, through the hexes that are all covered by the sea. They cannot move at such a hexes like that because they are. Uh, you can see there is a lot of land here. Uh, there is one uh, notable except, exception of this rule, which is here. You can see this uh, bit more navy blue uh, counter lands, land areas here with some game specific rule nodes. It says that these two hexes may be and may be entered by the naval units, but these areas here are not. <clears throat> so, why I moved on this hex, you may ask, because uh, this is only hex which is cap capable for uh, my uh, amphibious units to make uh, amphibious assault. Let's move this uh, Vietnamese units a bit. You can see that this uh, light yellow line here. It says this is these are beaches. I was a bit surprised when I read about it because uh, there is a lot of uh, shore all over uh, here, but according to the author, uh, all these uh, uh, shore areas are very muddy, very rocky and very very hard to perform any uh, serious uh, amphibious assault. The only amphibious assault capable area is here. So if we want if we want uh, uh, want to make such amphibious assault, we can use only these two hexes. So our amphibious units have to enter this zone and stay here because uh, amphibious assault is combat. So to make such a combat, we have to wait till the combat phase. Okay, so that's all when it comes to the naval units, uh, the naval movement, you, uh, and so. I hoped uh, I was able to show you everything fine, but still, that's not all. Uh, we have some airborne units. Let's examine them a bit. Chinese player has total total number of six airborne brigades. Uh, you can see that some of them are light infantry. This is this uh, this uh, we know uh, we know this uh, because of this yellow uh, number on the black background. It says this is light infantry and also because of the icon and two of them also are mechanized. So they are equipped with some heavy weapons. So they are much much faster and significantly stronger. So we can drop them anywhere in the Vietnam with some uh, limitations. We are not able to uh, make a landfall on the, in the jungle, <coughs> in the uh, urban hexes, in the cities or in the marshes. This limits our options a bit. So uh, what, what can we do? Uh, also, uh, game rule says that air transport is limited to the four units, four stacking points. So we can on, we have uh, even if we have six uh, uh, of them, and each of them has stacking value of one, we can only uh, make uh, airborne movement of four of them in the one segment. So I think I will move this to to the Chinese holding box, and I can make a landing with four of them. So, where do I want them to land? I think I will land this one here. And now I have to make the entire procedure of paradrop stuff. First, I have to make sure if this unit was transported here. So, I'm going to use standard game air defense fire and now mission mission side because they are on the mission have air superiority yes they have so we are using this column and next we have to check for modifiers per escort point maximum plus two i can use my air points to give this unit some kind of uh, protection by escort and i'm but i'm not going to do that because I uh, I will need these air points to support my combat later. If mission is air transport in the home of friendly country, no, 
Vietnam is definitely not a friendly country here. Uh, minus 2. If target is within 2 hexes from enemy airfield, installation or naval unit. And now we have to check if in the 2 hexes range there is enemy uh, installation, airfield or naval unit. Yes, it is airfield here, so we have minus 2 for our roll. Minus 1 is hex is or in or adjacent to the hex containing enemy armor or mechanized units. No, we don't have any. So we have to make a roll with a minus 2 modifier. I rolled 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, and we have minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So we are fine. <coughs> Our planes transported us uh, quite well. And now I have to make a roll if paradrop went fine. 7. I, I, would I would have plus one uh, modifier if I would land in the enemy zone of control, but there is no enemy zone of control, so it is 7, it is flat, so I'm fine. And uh, paradrop spends uh, all our uh, movement points, but if I landed next to the enemy installation city or so, I can still move here, and now I have to take uh, dr uh, draw randomly one clearing counter and place it here. I will tell you later how this clearing stuff works. And now I'm going to make another land with this brigade here. First I have to make a, a roll for air, <coughs> air defense. I have still minus two because of enemy airfield here. It is three. Oh my! Three minus two is one. A your superiority, one is fine, great. So now let's make a roll for paradrop. It is seven again, so it is fine. They are still landed, uh, they, and they they still can join their pals here. And my next landing, where I'm going to land, I think I will land here. This can be harder, but. Or maybe, hmm, I think this, could, uh, this can be good to uh, provide some support to uh, my units that will be fighting here for, uh, in, uh, for, uh, for this uh, land, but I, I, will, I would rather try to land here. I am landing next to the enemy air base. Oh, sorry, I should move my camera a bit. Okay, that's fine. So th this will be minus two modifier. I rolled seven, so I am fine. And now for the paradrop, it is one, so I am fine, and I am moving here, and I am placed under clearing counter, and next my uh, mechanized brigade lands here. They are five. Fi there is five minus two. It is three, so they are fine. And paradrop roll. Six, they are fine, so they are joining their pals in the in the attempt to capture this enemy air base. So that's all when it comes to the uh, naval and air movement. So next we can move into the land movement. This will be a lot of hell of movement here because uh, we have a lot of Chinese uh, units on the border and they are going all to move and to attack our brave Vietnamese defenders. Uh, but first I need to correct one thing that I uh, uh, told you wrong. You can land on Mars. You can make a paradrop here, but it is uh, uh, much more risky. As you can see, uh, this is a table for flat landing, flat woods. We don't have flat woods in this game. Row of marsh, so you can see that uh, problem that this is much, much more problematic, and row woods. So this is going to be much more harder for you to land on such a terrain. That's why I decided to land on the flat terrain, because it was easy, easier to do uh, and uh, much easier for my 
uh, airborne units to survive such a landing. OK, so next we have initiative movement phase uh, segment. Sorry, I, I tend to mistake uh, segment and phase. <laughs> OK, so uh, we made a, a naval movement, uh, air movement, and now we are mo going to make some land movement. All right. So starting here, I will move this brigade here. So these three units will attack this combat outpost. Combat outpost, outpost are units that I think uh, I saw them previously in the uh, next war India Pakistan. Uh, I played via Vassal only. I don't, don't, uh, I don't have uh, India, Pakistan and uh, Korea of this series. So these combat outposts, uh, uh, you can uh, place them only uh, on the hexes adjacent to the country border and they are not very uh, impressive when it comes to, to their combat value, but they can somehow slow down enemy advance. And now here. I am moving this brigade here, they are moving down the road, so they are fine, but now, as you can see, here we have a jungle. And uh, moving down the jungle uh, is not something you will find easy, especially for the uh, mechanized and uh, motorized units. We have plus 3 for the motorized units and plus 2 for the mechanized units, and uh, also you can see that uh, it is uh, raw terrain here, below the jungle, because jungle is in hex terrain. We have two kinds of terrain. Hex terrain, this is this uh, below, that covers the entire hex, and in hex terrain, that covers a part of hex. So jungle is in hex terrain, while, uh, for example, here we have also some kind of uh, raw terrain below. So, raw terrain costs motorized units 3 and jungle adds additional plus 3. So, we would have to spend 6 movement points for this unit, which is motorized unit, to enter such a hex. You can see this is bad. Uh, here we have a clear terrain, so we, uh, we have 4. This is still not good. I think I will move them here and that's all I can do while this unit will move here. It cannot enter this hex <coughs> because it already spent four movement points and it would need another four movement points to enter this hex. So this is impossible for them. Uh, all right, next here. Uh, I am uh, I'm going to move my unit here. Uh, I may do so because this unit have, ha, uh, uh, has no zone of control. Uh, normally, units with stacking value of 2 or more have zone of control. So when you are in the enemy zone of, of, of control, you cannot move through this zone of control. But because this unit hasn't stacking value, it hasn't zone of control, so I am able to move here. Which will be quite important later, you will see. And next here. I am spending three movement points to move here. Next one, two, to move here. <clears throat> this is secondary, secondary road. And now one, two, and now here. It is clear terrain with jungle. It would cost me four, am I right? Flat one, jungle plus two. This is a me mechanized unit, so it will uh, cost me another three movement points, so I can move here. And that's the entire Chinese land movement. So that's co this concludes uh, initiative movement uh, segment, and now we are moving into initiative combat segment. Alright, so let's carry on our battles. We are starting here. Uh, we have combat outpost and <coughs> three Chinese units that are attacking it. You can notice that each unit has three values. The last one is movement, the first one is attack, the second is defense. 
this combat outpost has no attack value and no movement value, so it just stays where it is and defends such hex. But it is in the jungle. And the jungle is, well, quite annoying thing. You won't like it when you are attacker. First, uh, when you have uh, your mechanized or armored unit units that are attacking into the jungle, they have their strength halved, rounded up. So, this unit has two, this unit has two, and this unit has two. So we have six. Six against two. So, uh, let's go into the combat results table to see how it works. I'm not gonna move this and here and there all the times, but I think that it might be helpful. So, we need to check our kind of terrain. We are fighting any jungle. So, we have 3 to 1 as combat odds. This is our base, base combat odds, but that's not all. Next, <coughs> we have to check if we don't have any column shifts. First, we have to, we have to choose one among attacking units that will be a leading unit, one that leads the entire attack. I think this will be that. It has a combat efficiency, this number on the right, as 6, while this combat outpost has combat efficiency of 5. Uh, so 6 minus 5 is 1. And because of that we have one column shift, so we had 3 to 1 and now we have 4 to 1. And that's all when it comes to the <coughs> column shifts. I, I could use my artillery, but I'm not going to do it because I will need it here in the much more uh, complicated combat. So that's all when it comes to the column shifts. And the next thing are die roll modifiers. Oh sorry, one more thing. Oh, I almost forgot. In the turn one, Chinese player gets plus one column shift because of the surprise attack. This goes for the entire turn one only. So we have five to one, thanks to this. And the next thing are die roll modifiers. First, uh, we can call for a support. I'm... I think I will call for one air point. So let's check. I'm shifting call air points counter from 7 to 6. And now I have to check if these uh, aircraft are act actually reached the place. So I need to use standard game air defense table, fi uh, table fi fire. And I have air superiority, so I will use this column. And now I have no modifiers here for this for the die roll because target hex is not occupied by uh, armor or mechanized enemy units. It is not adjacent or in the two hex range from any enemy airfield or air base. So I just have to make a roll. I rolled two, so two. It is nothing. So I get minus one die roll. Uh, you can see there is a very handy die roll modifiers track here below the column uh, combat results table, so you can use it to mark uh, your modifiers with plus or minus. Okay, so let's uh, check. I'm not going to. I I could also use my combat helicopters, but again, I'm not going to use them. I will need them later, or I can use uh, my navy, but I'm not. Uh, don't I don't have any ships there. So that's all when it comes to the <coughs> air support. And we have some more situations when we can get modifiers. First, attacking from five or six hex, six hexes. No, we are attacking from the three hexes. <coughs> Next, war Korea only attacking from the tunnel. This is something interesting. Uh, when I read a book about uh, 1979 war between China and Vietnam, an author wrote a lot about Vietnam Vietnamese units using tunnels. There are no tunnels in this game. This is interesting because I expected them to be here, but they are not. Minus one attacking from three or four hexes. Yes, 
we are attacking from three hexes. So I shift my die roll modifier into minus two. Mountain infantry? No, we don't have mountain infantry. Light infantry? No, we don't have light infantry. Reminder of the initial odds calculation. This is not important for us here. Light infantry again? No. Defender in the installation? No. Mountain infantry? No. Per additional formation in the multi formation attack? No. Uh, let's uh, take a look. We have all the units, uh, all the attacking units of the one formation. You can see they are all light yellow. Their icon is light yellow, so they are one formation. And next. Next were Korean recruit. For attack by Japanese? No, we don't have Japanese units. For combined attack of the different nationalists? No, we just have Chinese units. And the other two modifiers are for uh, next war India Pakistan and next war Korea. So we have minus two die roll modifier. I'm going to make a roll. It is seven. Hmm, not very good. Not very good. And now I subtract two, so I get five. So my uh, combat result is five. I'm moving into five. So it's one slash two. This says that uh, this side is for defender, this side is for attacker. So attacker suffers one loss, defender lo suffers two losses. And now let's see. Defender suffers two losses, but it has only one uh, side. There is uh, <coughs> one uh, uh, one step. It, it it doesn't. Uh, it can uh, lose more, so it is eliminated. <coughs> and now I have to uh, suffer one lo loss. And now the, I, I guess you remember that I had to check choose one of my units that was leading an attack. It was this brigade, and it is first to suffer any losses. And now it has to be flipped because of that. And now, because uh, Defender was eliminated, then uh, my units, but only those that are mechanized, motorized or armored, may not only, only occupy the vacant hex, but they may also enter the another hex. It is called uh, Advance After Combat. There are some limits about it, but now I can do it quite easily here. Here and that's all. I cannot enter this unit here because a stacking limit is four stacking points. And notice that uh, advance after combat is allowed in the jungle only if the another hex is linked with the uh, hex that was occupied by enemy unit with road. So, for example, I uh, I, I wouldn't be able. No, I would be able to enter this hex because there is a road. But if I would be, if I would uh, <coughs> destroy the enemy on that hex, then I wouldn't be able to advance here because there is no road connection between these two hexes. All right. So that's all when it comes to this battle. We are going into another combat, right here, and this will be much more harder. First, let's check the odds. We have nine against. Oh no, sorry, no, no, we don't have nine. We have six. Why? Because this is mechanized unit, so it is halved when attacking into the jungle, so it is three, and this is motorized infantry, so it's not halved, so it is six against nine. And uh, it is my one to two then. So now let's calculate any, let's check modifiers. First, both of these units have combat efficiency of 6, and this unit has combat efficiency of 6. So no column shifts for combat efficiency. I will call for art artillery support, so I'm moving this artillery like that. Why like that? Because artillery can provide two, uh, two uh, combat supports for the entire turn. So 
when it's shifted like here, it means that it was used once. And it, when it's shifted like here, it means it was used twice. So I'm using it once, and now I have one to one. Still no good. <laughs> okay, and now I have one more shift uh, because of the surprise attack in the turn one. And that's all when it comes to the uh, column shifts, but now we are moving into the uh, die roll modifiers. First here, I'm going to call for my combat helicopters. You can see they are out of the board. This means that they can provide support in the 7 hexes range only. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's fine. So I'm shifting them. They are, uh, they are used twice, just like artillery. And I have to make a roll for standard game AU defense uh, fire table with minus 1 because this is mechanized unit. 3 minus 2 is 1, so it is fine. I get minus 1 because of the uh, air support. Now I'm going to call for 1 air point. 3 minus 1 is 2, it is fine, so I have minus 2. Okay, that's my diamond modifiers. I don't have any other. So let's make a roll. It is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. It is 1 and 2. So, attacker suffers 1 step loss and defender suffers 2 step losses. So, because of that, this division is eliminated. And I can advance here and there, because these hexes are linked with a road. Hey, I have a road clear out of the jungle. This is impressive. This is very good for, chi for China, uh, ch uh, China, Chinese army, because an, the goal for a Chinese unit is to leave this damn jungle as soon as possible. Okay, next combat goes here. We have these three units attacking this combat outpost. Uh, we are attacking into the jungle again, so we have to uh, divide, uh, uh, sorry, half our st strength of our mechanized units. So we have three, five, and this is motorized unit, so we don't have to halve it, so it, is, it has still three. So we have eight. Eight against two. It is four to one. It is 4 to 1. Next I'm going to use this unit as leading unit, so it has 6 against 5, so we have plus 1. It is 5 to 1. And next we have plus 1 because of this surprise attack, so we have 6 to 1. And I'm not going to use this artillery. 6 to 1 is very good result, uh, good odds I not, don't think I will need uh, to, uh, to uh, modify it with artillery. And I'm calling for one a point support. It is four, so I have it. And that's all. And so I'm going to make a roll. It is zero. Wow, very good roll. Zero minus one is minus one. It is minus three error. It means that defender losses suffers three step losses and it has to retreat. Well, this unit has only one step, so it is eliminated and I am able to enter this hex. This hex only because I cannot enter this hex. Why? Uh, I guess you remember it is not linked with the road. So I can, uh, uh, I can enter this hex and maybe that hex, but I'm not going to do that. It won't, won't do me any good. All right, finally combat here. Again, we have three me motor mechanized units. So each of them has to half their st its strength. So we have, I have 2, 4, 7 against 4. It is 1, one to half and 1 to a, one and half to 1 and minus 1 because of this in, initial odds reminder. Uh, how it works? If you have not a round uh, number, for example 
eight, uh, uh, nine, uh, nine to eight, uh, you get minus one modifier in your favor, just like here. Next, I'm going to use this unit as a leading force. It has six against four, so I have plus two, so it's three to one. And next, I have plus one column shift because of the surprise attack, and minus one because of the... Oh, I made a mistake. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, why? Because I have four, two, four, seven against eight. Why eight, you may ask? It is jungle. And in the jungle, leg units that are defending have their strength doubled. So I have seven against eight. So it is one to two to one instead. Sorry for that mistake. Six against four is two, so I have one and a half to one. Surprise attack is one plus one, so I have two to one. And artillery support is plus one, so I have three to one. That's, pro that's, that's the correct number. I'm calling for helicopters. I rolled, oh sorry, I roll. I'm gonna roll again. It is nine, so the, these helicopters are fine. They are coming to help me. And I am calling, uh, do I have to call for uh, air point? I think I will. Four, it is minus one. All right, and I am attacking from three hexes, so I have another minus one. So it's minus three. And Vietnamese play player, decides to call for his one air point support. But it will be very hard for a Vietnamese player. Why? Because he will use a, uh, target side uh, has air superiority, so he will use this column with uh, minus one because there is enemy mechanized units on the adjacent hex. Wow! But he did it! <laughs> Impressive! So, he has plus one and because of that total number of die roll modifiers is minus two. I roll four. Four minus two is two. It is quite good for Chinese player, I believe. Yes, it's minus one and error. This means that uh, defender suffers one step loss and has to retreat one hex. But he may try to keep this position. If he wants to, he has to make a roll and he, he has to uh, get a result which is equal or higher than his combat efficiency. His combat efficiency is 3. Not very impressive. So I think he will eventually retreat to hexes. 1, 2. And now Chinese player may enter this hex and enter this or that hex. I will move here, I will move here, and I will move here, while this unit will move here. This is almost complete combat uh, phase. Almost, yes, because we have one more, or rather two more combat combat here to go. So here we're going to make an amphibious assault. I have two Chinese mechanized marine brigades on this hex, and the question is if I'm going to attack uh, any of uh, each of these hex, each with one of these brigades, or uh, all of them attack one. I think I will uh, land separate separate attacks on both hexes. It will be a bit more risky, but if I will uh, make it, I will have a much uh, bigger beachhead around uh, in this area. So, let's start here. I'm uh, attacking uh, this uh, Vietnamese uh, uh, armored brigade with this uh, Chinese mechanized marines brigade. Uh, my strength is two, is three, but when you make an uh, amphibious assault, your strength is always halved. So I have two against three, so it's uh, one and half, one to two. We are fighting in the flat terrain. So. Let's next let's go to the column shifts. I have six against four, so I have plus two, and I have plus one because of the surprise in the first turn. So I move 
one shift right. Okay, that's all when it comes to the column shifts and next we are moving into die roll modifiers. First I'm calling for the uh, one a uh, point uh, support three it is fine so I have minus one and I will call for one combat support of this group you can see it has one and one this means that it has uh, one point of uh, support with the one hex range so I can support this combat so I move it like that and I get minus one and uh, that's all so now I have to make a roll I rolled two two minus two is zero D yes yes it is why uh, let's take a look I get minus one error this means that enemy suffers one step loss and has to retreat one or two hexes so Vietnamese armored brigade re uh, moves here and I am able to move here and to capture this hex this is very important because if you won't be able to force enemy to retreat you won't be able to uh, land and then you will suffer additional one step uh, uh, one step loss oh I forgot about one thing sorry uh, when you are making a uh, amphibious assault and you are attacking enemy only with the units that are making amphibious assault you don't have any support from the land you get additional negative modifier so I had minus two and I but uh, because of this modifier I would have plus one so uh, the result would be not no zero but plus one but, but one it is one two error so uh, attacker suffers one step loss one step loss defender suffers two step losses so he is eliminated and it there is still retreat so i was able to capture this beach head anyway and i can place beach head counter here this beach head works uh, like a port like a supply uh, center and source and something like that Okay, let's make another combat. Now, we have 3 against 4, but like I said before, this unit has to uh, half its attack strength, attack strength, so it has 2 against 4, so it's 1, 2, 2. It has 6 against 4, so I have plus 2, and plus 1 because of the surprise, so I have 1, 2, 2, and now I am calling for two. These are my two remaining air points. Three, they are fine, so I have minus two. And the Vietnamese player decides to use his one, one, one last remaining air, air point. Two, no good. No good. Why? Uh, it is minus one because of the enemy mechanized unit on the adjacent hex. So he has one. And one in the air superiority is a, a board minus two and a star. This means that he cannot use uh, his mission aborted. He cannot use this. And because of this star, this means he suffers one permanent loss of the air points. Because of that, I place air points destroyed on the one in the matrix table and uh, every time a Vietnamese player will uh, roll for air points in the following turns he will have to subtract one from the number of the air points he will receive okay so now we have uh, minus two and no other modifiers so let's make a roll five. Oh, this can this might be problematic it is five minus and sorry, minus one, because I forgot about, the, and, and again, I forgot about this modifier when you are fighting with the amphibious assault at units only. So I have five minus one, so it is four. Oh, still all right. It is one, one, retreat. So, 
attack, uh, defender retreats to one hex and attacker suffer each each of them suffers one step loss but defender uh, sorry but attacker is on the beach all right that was hard hard combat but we made it so our brave chinese marines are landing are landing even with some losses but they are fine okay this concludes uh, initiative uh, combat uh, segment and next we have something which is called elite reaction movement segment it says non-initiative player performs elite reaction all six seven and eight efficiency units not in the enemy zone of control can move so Vietnamese units that have uh, combat efficiency 6, 7 or 8 uh, there are no 7 or 8 uh, Vietnamese units, there are only few with 6 may now move, but only those that are not in the enemy zone of control so let's take a look on the board do we have any units like that? Hmm. yes this mechanized brigade this infantry division but uh, what about moving them somewhere? I think th this hex can be a problem, I believe, because you can see these Chinese units are moving here. But uh, And the pr uh, question is if I want to move my unit uh, here to stop them. I, of course I would like to move, for example, this infantry division here, but I cannot because it has only a combat efficiency of 5. So I can only move this lone division. Hmm, not good. I can move them here and I will stop them, uh, uh, these uh, Chinese units. In the elite reaction uh, segment, you are only moving, you are not attacking nor defending, uh, you are just moving and you cannot perform any other kind of movement. You cannot uh, make uh, air uh, transport, naval transport and so you can only move your units. Okay, so that's all. I cannot move any other units in this uh, segment. And next is exploitation movement segment. In this segment, attacker moves his units, moves, uh, his units again. So this is just yet another movement phase for Chinese player and I'm going to do something new here. I left one amphibious unit and I'm landing, uh, I'm uh, loading one of my... Uh, um, no, sorry, I decided otherwise it won't be good, it won't do me any good. I'm moving this uh, unit and uh, let's take a look on it. It is amphibious uh, group, but it can change into a surface action group. It, uh, it means that uh, amphibious units are, are returning to the port and escort, u escort units are still in use. And I'm switching into surface action group and I'm moving here. Uh, the South China Sea is contested area. It doesn't have counters of any side, and to move on such a hex, such as into such a season, I have to make a roll for contested C movement. Let's check. If I will roll 5 or less, <coughs> this mov movement is successful. If 6 or less, uh, 6 or 8 C movement aborted, and 8 or 9 or less, C movement aborted and transport units incur step loss. I don't have any transport units here. As for modifiers, each other surf surface action group uh, car carrier no, we don't have any carriers or other groups, air supremacy no, at last inshore box enemy controlled. Yes, inshore box is enemy controlled, so we will have plus one. Next we have submarine threat level, allied only, and uh, uh, so we can uh, uh, we, ha we we can ignore these two because we have we are not allied. China is non-allied in this game, so we have minus one, sorry plus one because of the enemy inshore uh, controls inshore hex. 
So I, I wrote 6 plus 1, it is 7, so 7, C movement aborted. And because of that, I have to retreat. I made it mostly to show you how this contested C movement uh, works. Nothing more, actually. Okay, so let's go to our brave Chinese soldiers <laughs> that are invading Vietnam. Okay, so let's start here. One, one, two, and it would be plus three, plus four. So it would be six, so I can move here. And one, two, three, four, five. I moved like that to have attack from three hexes, of course. And now here. They are, they have uh, orange, so they are motorized. And motorized units for entering a jungle play, pay pl plus three. And plus one because of the, the flat terrain, so it's four. and that's all. I cannot move, uh, enter this hex because it would be too much for me. Okay, now here. I'm moving here and I cannot move here because this hex has st uh, stacking uh, uh, points of two so it has zone of control and these units are in zone of control so they cannot just enter into this hex, but they can do something else, like 1 and 5. So still I will have this good uh, uh, modifier for attacking from the two different, three different hexes. Now, here and here. So, that's all, I believe. Hmm. Yes, I think that's all when it comes to the Chinese movement uh, segment. And now we are moving into exploit combat segment, which is interesting. Why? Because in the exploit combat segment, attacking player gets negative uh, plus two column shift. It, uh, this shows that our units are uh, quite spent after their first combat. They can still fight, but they won't be fight as effective. They won't be fighting as effective as they already did. But of course, you don't. You don't have to attack. You have to remember that you may just uh, enter enemy zone of control, and you, uh, and you don't have to attack enemy in this turn. So this is a. This is your decision if you want to now launch these attacks or not. Uh, these, uh, these attacks will be much harder, so I think I will only attack here. I have 3, 5, 7. 7 against 4, because this is uh, uh, a leg unit, so I have 4 against 7. It is, ma uh, it is 1 and half to 1, and minus 1, and now 6. No, I will use this unit as a, as a leading unit. I have 6 against 3. So I have plus 3. 1, 2, 3. Plus 1, because of the surprise attack. And, and, my, and minus 2, because of the exploit combat. So it moves into 3 to 1. I'm not going to use artillery. And I'm not going to use any air support, because I, I already spent all my air points. So that's all. I'm attacking from the two hexes, so no, no modifiers. I have only minus one. Three minus one is two. Is it is minus one and retreat. So defender suffers one step loss. It already suffered one step loss, so it is eliminated, and I am allowed to enter this hex only. I cannot move any further because these hexes are not connected with a road with this hex. And I'm not going to launch any other attacks because it would be very costly and uh, risky and I'm not going to use it. And uh, so I think this will conclude the first part of my video. It's already quite long and I'm not going to make it uh, longer. 
So uh, see you again in the part two.